It was all smiles at the stage start for those drivers in the T3 class, but for Cristina Gutierrez at least, they were short-lived. After a solid start to the stage, initially making headway through the dunes, she stopped under the most frustrating of circumstances after her Can-Am ran out of fuel. The Spaniard lost nearly an hour. She would have lost a lot more time had it not been for teammate and W2RC championship leader Austin Jones, who stopped to give her a tow back to the refuel point. Good. And it cost Jones dear, the American driver not eligible to get the time he lost helping Gutierrez back. As a result, he finished second in the stage, but nearly eight minutes down. We just finished the day. We saw Christina ran out of fuel like right in the beginning of the neutralization so we put a tow rope on her and towed her into the fuel so she could get some fuel and you know just what you do when you're on the same team you know you look out for one another she looked out for me during Dakar she had my back so I'll always have hers and in that situation obviously that's what we're gonna do you know we're teammates and you know we have each other's back so it's really no big deal. Back in the stage, and former World Rallycross superstar Matthias Ekstrom competing here in Abu Dhabi in a Can-Am was going well until he also ran out of fuel at kilometre 185. It cost him nearly two hours. Out front though, California's Seth Quintero in the Red Bull Off-Road Junior team was unstoppable. Alongside co-driver Dennis Sens, the pair in their Can-Am Racing T3 car are still looking for their first World Championship win, but started their bid well today, topping the timesheets to lead overall going into day two. The Dunes have a love-hate relationship. I love them, or I hate them, to be honest, because it gets hot, slow, treacherous, but for some reason, we always seem to do well on them, and that's exactly what we did today. Uh, looks like we were probably like sixth overall, the top car, so super stoked on that. Good way to start the rally. Hopefully we can uh, continue this and then have a good time for the rest of the week. Confirmation then that Seth Quintero leads after day one in the T3 class, with Austin Jones now in hot pursuit. He cannot afford to give time away like today again. And this is how things stack up in the W2RC Championship in the T3 class. Can Jones reel in Quintero? Michele Cinotto and Maurizio Dominella endured a tough day in the dunes. Michele has been rallying since the 1980s and co-driver Maurizio has completed an astonishing 31 of 45 Dakar rallies. So the veteran duo won't be panicking just yet. They're signed up for the entire W2RC season. They know that one tough day isn't the end of the fight. Amant Abdul Al Rahawi and co-driver Nasser Al Kuwari were seventh away from the start in the T4 category amidst the T3 runners. It was a successful day for them. Despite the heat and tough dunes, they picked up a spot to cross the finish line in sixth. Italy's Eugenio Amos and Paolo Cecchi were fourth off the start line this morning. They came across the finish line in the same position, 242 fiercely hot kilometres later. Only 46 seconds separate them from the podium. Spain's Pau Navarro with French co-driver Francois Cazalet currently hold that third position. But they in turn are just over a minute away from second. And they're the second best placed W2RC crew. So there is everything to fight for. Local heroes Mansour El Hale and Mohamed Al Hamri have had a strong day on home turf. Or should that be home sand? 
the Abu Dhabi team Maverick is four minutes and 15 seconds off the lead. And with four more long, hot days of action, that margin could vanish in a moment. There is no doubt they'll be inspired to attack again, even harder on day two. The overnight leader, however, is not new to the pressure of being hunted. Lithuania's Rokas Pashiska was the 12th starter this morning, right after the very best of the T1 cars. And with Spanish co-driver Oriol Vidal Montejano, he opened up a slender advantage during the course of a day, which was every bit as challenging as it had promised. Uh, it was a tough day, you know. It was hot, 38 degrees. Uh, my driver was sickness. Uh, he a little bit blew, you know, in the front of the stomach. But we survived, you know. First day, the organization said it would be difficult, hot. And yeah, it is like that. And uh, yeah, I see for everyone, uh, engine is uh, temperature high. And also for my uh, buggy was temperature high. But we are happy, we are surviving. Tomorrow, another day, and uh, we will see how it's going on. Just over five minutes is the advantage for our T4 leader, but that could disappear in a heartbeat. There's still an awful lot of racing to be done. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world, but for some, it has been a bruising opening day here in Abu Dhabi, while others have prospered. But there's still a long, long way to go. Day one of the 2023 Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge is done. Join us tomorrow for day two and another 365 kilometers of desert racing. Yeah.